praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to our service here at West Point Revival Center, and we're so glad that you have uh, joined us today for this service. And over the last couple of Sundays, uh, we've been going through James uh, chapter 1, and so the Lord willing, we'll finish that today. And if you did happen to uh, miss parts of that, you can go back to... Um, our Facebook page or YouTube page, all of our videos are archived on there. And so uh, you can catch up or uh, view any ones that you may have missed. And so we're thankful uh, that you're with us today for this service. We want the Lord uh, to move and to minister. You know, this just isn't a ritual. This just isn't because, well, we have to do this because we're Christians. Um, are we really Christians? Are we really following Christ if it's if we feel like we have to do it, if we're just checking off the boxes? But if we understand by reading his word and obeying his word and because we love him and we're so thankful for the sacrifice that he has made for us, um, we'll want to do it uh, because we understand the importance of gathering together and being together and how important it is uh, God's not, God's, it's not his desire for us to do this alone, not even with him, Adam, uh, communed with God. And God said, it's not good that man should dwell alone. And that's not just talking about in a, in a marriage, intimate relationship, uh, but even God understood our makeup because he created us and how important it is for us to have fellowship and be together. And so, uh, if we're married, that spouse uh, to encourage and to help us and work with us. And if we're single, uh, then we connect with other people uh, to encourage us and help us and um, someone we can talk to face to face. And um, even though God supplies all of the need uh, that we have, he understood the importance of connection as humans. We need connection with other people and that's one of the sad things and such a dangerous thing of this pandemic is that it's separating people uh, social distancing right and and stay home and and all this stuff and and listen we're not being political here this morning but connection is so important um, if the world can divide us if the world can separate us if if we think we can get along with just social media or just even watching church online and sometimes that's a person's only option i understand that uh, but most of the time it's not and if we forsake the assembling of ourselves together just to watch it online because it's convenient or we can do it watch when we want uh, those those motives are wrong and in fact they'll hurt us in the long term and so uh, i'm glad you joined us online but this isn't our end goal our end goal is to um, establish a church here in Corner Brook where we can be face to face, gathered together, and, and that doesn't necessarily have to be in a building, uh, but we're together. We're fellowshipping, uh, we're breaking bread together, we're praying together, we're, we're reading God's Word, studying God's Word together, and so uh, we're praying and, and we've faced many obstacles in trying to get our in person services started. Uh, but God is making a way, and, and we hope to share some good news with you um, shortly. But uh, we're just continuing to move on, and that's why Bible studies, that's why home groups um, are so important to connect that way. And uh, uh, having a coffee together, or tea, or whatever it may be, um, having a meal together. Uh, fellowship is such an important part of the church. But uh, if you're interested in a Bible study, being a part of a home group, uh, please reach out to us. It's something that we need to do on a weekly basis. We need to be faithful to those things if we're going to be mature and strong Christians, if we're not going to allow our flesh to rule our lives, if we're not going to allow the devil uh, to be our master. And um, we need that weekly uh, fellowship together, that weekly study in God's Word. We need that daily Bible reading, daily prayer. Those disciplines are so important in our lives. We want to go to the Lord in prayer 
today. And of course, uh, many of us have uh, needs that we want to pray for. And so uh, let's take these needs to the Lord together in prayer. You can voice those needs to God um, yourself with your voice, uh, no matter where you are. Uh, but together we can join together in corporate prayer as well, uh, seeking the Lord. And I'm thankful that he hears and answers prayer. He doesn't always give us the answer that we want, uh, but that doesn't mean he doesn't answer it um, because he knows what's best for us. But uh, we place our trust and our faith in him. So let's pray today. Jesus, we're thankful for this day. God, we're thankful for your goodness and mercy to us. And uh, we appreciate the opportunity to gather together uh, through this video, through online, Jesus, to study your word, to preach your word, Lord God, uh, to grow as disciples who will worship you in spirit and in truth, Jesus. God, I pray for the many needs uh, that people have. God, you know the needs, whether it's a physical need, whether it's a spiritual need, whether it's a an emotional need or financial need. Jesus, you're able uh, to step into every situation, God. And I pray that your will would be done, that prayers would be answered, needs uh, would be met, Lord God. People would be saved. Uh, people would be healed by your power, Lord God. Jesus, there's nothing that you cannot do if we would only have faith uh, completely in you, God. We ask that you would touch in this service today, you would anoint me to minister your word, that you would open the hearts uh, and minds and ears of each one watching, uh, that your word would penetrate our hearts and would be planted upon good ground within our lives so that it can spring us, spring up and produce uh, good fruit in our lives. God, help us to uh, follow you. Help us to uh, commit uh, to you to be faithful, Lord God, and to be the person that you want us to be. Help us to shine our light in this world, in our community. Help us to be a witness. Help us to reach out to the lost. Oh God, there are so many that need you. There are so many that believe there's no hope anymore for this world. They don't believe there's any hope for even their lives. But Jesus, you are our hope. God, you are our savior, our salvation, Jesus. And I pray that you would draw us closer to you today, that you would move in our city of Corner Brook, that you would move in our province of Newfoundland, in our country of Canada, in a mighty and powerful way, that your spirit would be poured out upon all flesh, God, that signs and wonders and miracles would be done in your name, Jesus, to draw people to you, Lord God. Help us to reach as many people as possible and lead them to you. Work in each of our lives. Help us to be obedient to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's just lift our hands right now and just worship the Lord. Jesus, we magnify you. Lord, we love you, O Heavenly Father. God, you're good. Your mercy endureth forever. I'm so thankful, Lord Jesus, for how you have redeemed me, how you have set me free, Lord God, and what you have done in my life, how you turn my life around and what blessings, God, you have given to me. And I pray that I would be a witness for you, that you would be pleased with my life. And God, it would uh, be an example to others what a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ is, and you would be happy and satisfied with my, me and my witness. God, I'm not perfect. Forgive me of my sins, Lord God. I know I there's areas in my life I need to work on, God, but I'm thankful that your word uh, draws us and helps us and gives us the solutions that we need to make our lives better. Praise the Lord. Jesus, you are good. Hallelujah. Praise the wonderful name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel his presence right now. It's what an honor it is to serve him. What an honor it is to feel his presence. If you would just reach out to him as well, I know you could feel his presence as well and allow him to draw you and allow him to mold and to shape you after his will. Praise God, it's because it's so important that we make heaven our home. It's so important that we are right with God so that we can spend eternity 
with him. If there's any sin in our life, it needs to be repented of. We need to turn away from it and walk in newness of life. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we've been talking about James chapter 1, and oh my goodness, there's uh, just so much uh, we, we can learn from James, from the book of James, but uh, especially from chapter 1 as we've been going through it. And um, it just makes us better people, makes us better Christians, and it helps us to live victoriously over sin in our lives. Praise God. We finished up with uh, verse number 21 of chapter 1. Uh, we talked about 2 Timothy 3 and 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. The word of God is alive. It's a manual on how to live uh, according to God's plan and will for our lives. But it also, uh, it rebukes, it corrects, it instructs us, and, and we need all of those things in our life. And so let's move on uh, to verse number 22. This morning, James 1 and 22, I'm reading from the modern English version. Uh, but keep your Bible open, follow along with these scriptures. Be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves you see if all you do is hear the word you can be deceived and they're thinking that uh, you're going to be right with God that you're going to uh, spend eternity with him that you're going to be saved but it takes more uh, than just hearing. Too many people hear the word, but don't go any farther. It's not enough just to hear the word. It's not enough just to believe in God and accept him as your savior. You have to follow his word and be obedient to it. We have to hear it, but we also have to be doers of the word. We have to apply it to our lives. Uh, faith without works is dead, right? We need those two things go hand in hand. It's not all about works. It's not all about faith. But when those two things are combined, James and Paul talks about it. They don't contradict each other, uh, but they, they show us the importance of faith and of works by hearing and believing in the word of God, but also doing the word of God, applying it to our lives. Unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of people that believe in God that are going to be lost. You say, oh, well, don't judge them. Well, I can, the word tells me that. Their life shows me that, shows God that. And, no, and, and we talked about it before, right? Now, God never intended for anyone to go to hell, but its borders were enlarged because of people's disobedience. And so it's not enough to hear, but we have to be doers or will be deceived into uh, living comfortably and being comfortable in how we are living. Verses 23 through 25, for if anyone is a hearer of the word, so uh, James expounds upon this part, be doers of the word and not hearers only. So for any, if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man viewing his natural face in a mirror, he views himself and goes his way and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man will be blessed in his deeds. So easy to forget what we hear, but when we apply it and we do it, along with hearing it, we establish it in our life and we don't forget it in our life. A mirror shows us what we look like, warts and all. My wife has uh, a little mirror understand where she does her hair. And um, this mirror, you can turn it. It's from Costco. And, and the mirror, it's lighted, it's round, it shows um, your face. But you can turn it and it gives you a really big close-up. And, and my wife is always like, have you looked at yourself in this mirror? And I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. 
I mean, a big mirror shows me enough. Uh, but if you look through that little one, I mean, you can think, my, my skin is nice, you know, I look pretty good. But you look in that mirror that, that, that magnifies, you know, every skin pore. And it's like, oh my goodness, look at the dirt in that skin pore, in those skin. Look at the, the blemish, the wart, right, on my uh, face. Oh my goodness, I never saw that wrinkle, right? But we may not see that any other way but by looking in the mirror. Well, the Word of God does the same thing as that mirror. The Word of God shows us the good in our life, uh, but it also shows us our faults, you know, our weaknesses, our sins. But I'm thankful that it doesn't stop there. It just doesn't show us uh, where we need to improve in our life. It just doesn't show us where we fall short in our lives because we've all sinned, right? Uh, none of us is worthy of salvation to, and to be saved, uh, but it also shows us what to do to fix it, right? It just doesn't leave us in a negative uh, spot. It just doesn't beat us up and say, you, you know, you've sinned, you're weak, you're no good. Uh, you can't measure up to God's love. You're not worthy. Uh, you're a sinner, on and on and on, which we are and which is true. But it also tells us this is how you fix it. You put on his righteousness because Jesus Christ uh, shed his blood on Calvary, died and rose again the third day. Uh, we can have victory in our lives. We can be saved. We can be clothed with his righteousness and with his glory. Here in verses 23 and 24, a hearer only is someone who looks in the mirror, then walks away and forgets what he saw. You can look and say, oh my goodness, you know, what's that bump on my face? But then if you leave for the rest of the day and you're not standing in front of that mirror, uh, you forget, right? You might forget about it, well, maybe not a bump because you'd feel it, uh, but if there was a red blotch on your face, you could forget about that during the day because you're not standing in front of that mirror. You, you've seen it, but you've walked away. Uh, you have a big interview or a date and you look in the mirror and you see mustard on the side of your face and, and you tell yourself, well, I need to remove that. And then you walk away and you go to your interview or your date and, and the interview goes bad and, and the person's like, oh, that was nice, but I'm not interested. Uh, and you're like, why? And they're like, well, you got mustard on your face. Oh, well, I knew I was supposed to do something about that. Well, why didn't you, right? You've got to do both of those things. That, that perfect law of liberty is the gospel. If we hear the gospel and respond to it, then we will be blessed. But to hear it and then forget it is of no benefit. We can, we can be watching this video, participating in the service. We can go to church and hear the word of God. It can convict us. And yet, if we don't do anything about it and we walk away, we forget what has transpired in our life. And it ultimately doesn't do any good in our life because we heard it, but we didn't apply it to our life. One commentary said it this way, it is not talking but walking that will bring us to heaven. A lot of people talk about God, a lot of people talk about how they love God, but it's not the talk, it's in the walk that matters. Hallelujah. James chapter, uh, chapter 1 verse 26, if anyone among you seems to be religious and does not bridle his tongue, ho, ho, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Can you tell by how someone talks if they're a Christian, if they love God, if they're a follower of Jesus Christ? Absolutely. Yep. You can. You can. In a vain religion, there is much show. It's all about just checking off the boxes. It's all about just works. When people are more concerned to seem religious than be religious, their religion is in vain. That was what the Pharisees were all about. They, they dressed up, they had the best clothing, they looked the best, they, they went around and, and they, they said, you know, all these things. They quoted 
the Torah, the law, uh, they talked, you know, uh, great sermons and so on. And listen, n nothing wrong with those things in their place, but inside Jesus saw their heart. In fact, Jesus was probably the hardest on anyone. It was the religious people that looked religious on the outside. It made it look like they were religious to everybody else, but on the inside, they were sepulchers, whited sepulchers. Inside, they, they were vipers, a den of vipers. Uh, they were ravenous wolves. They were hypocrites. And Jesus was hard, hard on that, much harder than he was even sinners. Now, again, that doesn't excuse anyone's sin, and those people, a sinner will be just as lost as a Pharisee, as a hypocrite, as a person that, that talks the talk but doesn't walk the walk because that's vain religion. Matthew 15, 8 and verse, verses 8 and 9, this people draws nigh unto me with their mouth, right? And honors me with their lips. It's easy to give lip service to God, right? And talk and in going to church and, and saying the right words and knowing the, the church terminology and language, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And unfortunately, too many religions have gotten that, to that place. They just teach the doctrines and commandments of men, not the word of God. We need to be careful that we don't just come to church to put on a show or try and fool someone. We can fool our parents. We can fool our neighbors. We can even fool our pastor sometimes, but we can never fool God. He knows our hearts. He knows our inward desires. And we can say we love God all we want, but if inwardly the desires of the flesh are winning in our life, if inwardly all we care about is, is doing what feels good, then our religion is in vain. Vain religions adopt a lot of the world's views. Well, this isn't sin anymore. Well, yeah, the Word of God says that, but that doesn't mean that anymore. They've changed their views. No longer is homosexuality a sin. No longer is living together a sin. No longer is drinking a sin. No longer is swearing a sin. No longer, you know, is, is whatever a sin any longer. We need to change with our times and with our culture, but God's word doesn't change. He loves every single soul, but he hates sin. And so we have to be right with God. We have to ask for forgiveness of sin. We have to turn away from those sins and walk righteously and holy before our God. A vain religion talks about one another's faults and shortcomings. It looks down upon other people. Vain religion makes me look holier than anybody else. It makes me think that I'm better than other people when we've all come short of the glory of God. That without Christ and his grace and his mercy, I'm a sinner condemned to be lost. If it was not for without the grace of God, I could not be sin saved. Luke 18, 9 through 14, and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Well, there's vain religion. You're supposed to be righteous, but you despise other people. Listen, we're to despise sin. We're to hate sin, but we're to love everybody. We're to help as many people as we can, and we can do that without acknowledging uh, or overlooking their sins. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, a religious person, a, a godly person, and the other a publican, uh, the, the scum of the earth, the worst, the, the, the sinner of all sinners. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee 
They am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Huh. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Great, that's awesome. Those things are good. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, the Pharisee. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Listen, when we, we start praying, God, I'm thankful I'm better than other people. Lord, I, I'm thankful I'm holier than other people. I, I thank you, Lord, that, that I'm not like this. Well, such were some of us. It's only because of the grace of God that I'm not lost. It's only because of the grace of God my life isn't a mess. Hallelujah. It's all because of him, because of the cross of Calvary. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We didn't deserve it, but because of his love for us. And so when I go to prayer, I don't pray. Vain religion prays, I'm better. God, thank you for making me better than them. God, thank you for uh, making me holier than them. God, I'm so thankful I'm not like this person in our church who, who does this and does that. I, I'm so much better, Lord. Let me give you a list of all of the things that I do. <laughs> That's being religion. Matthew 12, 34 through 37, O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word, whew, I'm thankful all my words are under the blood today. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You better hope this morning, that your words are covered by his blood, that you've repented of those words, those evil words, those unflattering words, those mean words. Listen, none of us are exempt from that because we're human and we make mistakes sometimes. The words we say at home or school or at work or the words we say uh, by ourselves or, or with someone else are actions at school or at home or at work or when we're by ourselves. We'll give an account for all of that. Thankfully, if we've repented, genuinely repented of those sins, if we've been uh, baptized in his name, his blood is washing those sins away in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. James 1 and 27, religion that is pure and undefiled before God. The Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. True, pure religion, living a holy life, a righteous life, a godly life, obedient to God's word, and a charitable heart shows true religion. True religion is compassionate, is loving, is forgiving, is merciful, is gracious. That makes up what true religion is. Praise God. We want to reach people. We want to see them saved. But even more than that, we help people because we are Christians. Because of what Christ has done for us, we want to show them Christ's love so that they can be redeemed. We're kind and show love to everyone because the love of God is supposed to be in our hearts. It's more than just doctrine and what we stand for, but it's what's in our heart. It's how we treat people. There are lots of religions out there, but this world needs true religion, true, pure religion needs to see disciples that worship Jesus in spirit and in truth. And unfortunately, it only takes one generation to lose true religion 
as we see in our world today. Many denominations no longer stand for what they used to stand for. We've got to stand for the word of God. Judges chapter 2, uh, verses 7 and 8 and 10 and 11. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being 110 years old. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. What a, a sad portion of scripture. I'm sure that Joshua and the elders told the next generation, told their, their kids, their grandkids, great grandkids about the Lord. These kids, the, the, this other generation watched uh, Joshua and the elders serve God and, and, and love God and be uh, obedient to God's word. But that generation never got a hold of God for themselves. They, they didn't see the miraculous things that God did for them to get them to the promised land. And, and so because they didn't have their own relationship with God, own experiences with God, they did evil in his sight and served false gods. Vain religion won't save anyone. It just puts people in a false state thinking that they are right. But True religion will cause us to have an experience with God that will ultimately change our lives. 1 Samuel 4, 3 through 5, And when the people were coming to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore hath the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? They were losing against their enemy. Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. Hmm. Their relationship with God had just become a, an it, an object. They thought that the Ark of the Covenant, with this, this box, basically, would save them. It may save us when it cometh unto us. Not... Let's pray unto God. Let's pray unto our Savior. Let's seek God. They took an object that represented God and said, we'll just put that and walk with that as we're fighting, and it will save us. So the people sent to Shiloh that they may bring them from hence the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. And when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout so that the earth rang again. But the problem was they weren't right with God. The problem was is they weren't serving God with their whole hearts. They weren't living a life that was pleasing to God, but they thought that this representation, the statue or this pin or this necklace or whatever you want to substitute in there for the Ark of the Covenant that, that you know, my, my parents' relationship with God or my pastor's relationship with God or whatever it may be, when they saw this, they didn't even realize that God wasn't with them. Verse 10, and the Philistines fought and Israel was smitten and they fled every man into his tent and there was a very great slaughter for their fellow of Israel, 30,000 footmen. In verse 21, and she named the child Ichabod, saying the glory is departed from Israel because the ark of God was taken because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, the glory is departed from Israel for the ark of God is taken. It will save us. Vain religion. True religion also means being unspotted from the world, refusing to let the world corrupt us. We're in the world, we're a part of the world, we're reaching the world. 
yet we don't allow it to corrupt us. We can live above sin while reaching sinners. We can live above sin while helping those that are living in sin come to God. God gives us his, his spirit living inside of us. If we're walking in the spirit, is strong enough to keep us from sin. Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Second Corinthians 2, 17 and 18, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. First Peter 2 and 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are changed. We're no longer living in darkness. Light is flowing uh, in us and through us. Hallelujah. But yet we're still in the world, reaching the world, loving people, uh, uh, affecting the world, trying to um, keep it as godly as possible, not allowing sin um, and wickedness to rule. Praise God. But being a part of this world uh, to show people the love of God and what being a testimony of what God can do in a person's life when they surrender to him. That's true religion, that we love one another. We share the love of God with other people, and yet we remain pure and holy and righteous before the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's not always easy to do in the world that we live in, is it? Praise God, because uh, it's unfortunately the minority that has the voice right now. It's a minority uh, that seems to uh, be calling the shots and, and has the media's uh, favor. And if we disagree with them, they shout us down. They make us uh, look bad. They try to intimidate us. But we have to live for God and be what God wants us to be. We got to be careful. We don't get so mixed up in, in the political things of this world and the social things of this world. We just need to live for God and live by his commandments and share the word of God with other people. And when other people begin to uh, uh, give their life to God and live for him and experience the new birth, uh, being baptized in, in water and, and being filled with his spirit, hallelujah, there will be a change in their life. And, and because of that, that will affect the world. Amen. Praise God. We've got to be ready to meet him. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. What uh, deep, what uh, awesome uh, material God inspires James to give the church, give us to live um, a life that will make a difference in this world. Let's pray together. Jesus, we love you. Thankful. Oh, Lord God, for your word today, Jesus. And I pray that we would not just be hearers of your word this morning, God, but that we would be doers as well. That the word that we've heard today, the scriptures that we've read, God, that we wouldn't just hear them and then uh, sign off after this uh, service is done and, and go about our day and forget about what was said, but we would apply it to our life, that it would change us, that God would be able to mold and, and shape each one of us according to his will and his plan, that we would humbly uh, come before him with an, uh, uh, a repentant heart and an open spirit so that he could mold and shape us to be effective disciples for him. Help us, Jesus, I pray in this world to stand for truth, but yet at the same time love 
people as you do, Jesus. God, let us be the church. Hallelujah. Let us be true Christians. Let our religion not be in vain today, I pray. Bless each one, I pray. I just heard your word today, God, and I pray that it would make a difference in their life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us today. As always, we've got some uh, slides at the end here uh, that gives you some information on our website, on our Facebook page, our YouTube page, uh, our Instagram. You can follow us on all of those social media aspects. Uh, please like and, and uh, follow us, subscribe, uh, share our videos. Uh, if you've got a prayer request, if you've got a need, please contact us. That information is, is on those um, slides here at the end of this video. Uh, we just want to do what we can uh, to help you in your walk with God. And the Lord willing, uh, we'll see you next Sunday. But until then, let's continue to draw closer to God uh, through his word, through his spirit. Amen. God bless you today. Have a great day.